Hi, my name is Bob Langies, and today I'm going to talk about the Adtran NetVanta 1535P. We're going to go through a quick feature summary, a quick comparison to the Fibridge product, and then a brief demonstration of the product in operation. So let's talk about the NetVanta 1535, just the overall features that the unit provides. We'll talk about a quick comparison versus the Fibridge product, and then we'll go into an example of the Active Reach technology and take a look and see how that could possibly be deployed out in the field. So the NetVanta 1535P first and foremost is a 24 port power over Ethernet gigabit switch with some unique technology which is the active reach technology that we'll talk about here. And from a networking perspective, uh, consider the fact that this is a full on network switch, right? So 24 ports of gigabit power over Ethernet. There's an additional four ports of uplink capability with SFP modules so you're able to plug in fiber modules or additional copper modules to give you some more ports and connectivity to other switches. Uh, it's full layer 2 and some layer 3. So layer 3 light really amounts to 16 subnets that you could create static routes to address, uh, which really fills the void for most businesses, most smaller businesses that need layer 3 functionality. Uh, it does power over Ethernet, so 802.3 AF, as well as Active Reach PoE. And to explain Active Reach PoE really quick, uh, consider the fact that we're talking about some very long distances, some very long copper runs here, and there is some natural resistance built into the wire. So when you're looking at the power over Ethernet aspects, you just want to make sure that the distance and the power that will make it that distance will uh, power your devices as you require. Uh, there is a 62 gig of switching fabric capability, so it's nice fast on the back end in terms of switching. Uh, there are a couple different quality of service mechanisms, 802.1p and diff server supported. The 1535p also includes an integrated 24 port access point controller for wireless access. So you could use either the NetVanta 150 or the 160, so an ABG or an ABGN radio uh, with those two different varieties and it functions truly as a, as a unified wireless network so with the wireless access point controller functionality you could uh, create your SSIDs or change policy on all of those APs uh, through a centralized interface which is great. The Adtran NetVanta 1535P also includes a cabling diagnostics facility where you're able to zero in on a particular port and you're able to run a cable diagnostic that will give you important information such as the length of the cable if it's wired correctly or if it's just plain broken, uh, which is a great thing to be able to do and maybe you could avoid a, a visit on site or chasing uh, some problems that may be just cabling related. Uh, the system also includes a full DHCP server, which is very useful for a lot of reasons. First, if you have any IP type of devices such as cameras or telephones that need DHCP options uh, to give the unit configuration information, you'll need to have a DHCP server that's capable of doing that. So if it's your environment, you own everything, you may have an existing DHCP server that does options. In that case, you don't need this facility. However, if you're in an environment where maybe you don't have full access to that server or it's a simpler server that doesn't provide full options, you want to be able to give those phones the information that they need to know to boot. So that applies to many different phones including um, Polycom phones and Cisco phones and Shortel phones and Avaya phones. Uh, Adtran phones, many other manufacturers as well. And that capability leverages the other servers that are built into the 1535P which include FTP, HTTP, and TFTP because that's how those devices will be provided their files. So there's a small file store that's available on the 1535P that can ho uh, host configuration files for those devices. Uh, there's also an included SNTP server so if you'd like this device to provide time information to connected devices it could do that. An additional troubleshooting facility is the port mirroring function where you could have a port that's in production but maybe you'd like to do a, a packet capture on that port and with switching uh, all of the packets are directed to individual ports and to do a packet capture you have to redirect that information to a port where you can perform the capture so very useful in diagnosing uh, voice over IP problems or just general network problems if you want to see and then of course VLANs you could have a variety of VLANs on the system whatever you may need for a general network.
So the 1535 has a technology called Active Reach, and what Active Reach does for you is it extends Ethernet beyond the normal boundaries of Ethernet. So if we look at our chart there, we have a couple different uh, examples. One is in a, in a pristine sort of lab type of environment. You're able to get 10 megabit performance over a single pair with PoE up to 1,650 feet. And that you could get up to 100 megabit over four pairs up to 1,600 feet. The chart below, though, shows more of a real-world example uh, that takes into account some, maybe some not perfect cabling, but you still look at 10 megabit of performance up to 1,250 feet and then a variety of different distances. It really depends on exactly what the cable and the connections are able to perform, but you can see it pretty impressively ex extends the distance that Ethernet is able to travel over a variety of conditions. When we talk about the 1535P, one thing that often comes up is a comparison to the Five Bridge Unifier. And there's quite a few differences between the, the two platforms, and I'd just like to highlight these. First and foremost, the Adtran Vanna 1535P is a network switch, and the Five Bridge Unifier is not a network switch. They have one or two network ports, but the rest are dedicated to perform the long distance Ethernet, uh, like we'll show in our example. And I'd like to highlight that again. No, that's not a typo because it's truly a very important differentiator. With the FiBridge product, your flexibility and the amount of features that you have is far different than you have on the Advanta 1535P. Those features that we showed in the previous slides about all the different network facilities, there is uh, quite a bit of that missing from the FiBridge offering. From a, a bandwidth perspective, a huge difference is the 1535P is a gigabit switch, so you could get gigabit or 100 megabit or 10 megabit as regular old Ethernet, and on extended distances, you're able to get either 100 megabit or 10 megabit. The Fibridge product, because of the technology it's based on and how it operates, goes 25 megabit down, but only 1.4 megabit up. So you can see based on those numbers, you're really not going to be able to deploy Fibridge as a general network extender versus something that could be just, you know, just used for phones because phones don't require that much bandwidth. Uh, speaking of phones and other devices that may require PoE, the Netvana 1535P includes 370 watts of power. The FireBridge only includes 255 watts of power. So per port, you're really not able to uh, provide enough power to support some of the hungrier devices that are out today with color screens and just more capability. Uh, the next two items go hand in hand. So the AdTran includes a limited lifetime warranty and the FireBridge includes a one-year warranty. And the AdTran has a higher initial purchase price but the FireBridge Unifier ends up having a much higher lifetime cost. And why is that? Okay, first and foremost, uh, the Adtran product includes a lifetime warranty, right? So you buy the product, you own it, you know, years four and five and, and so on, you're going to have a warranty on that product. The FireBridge Unifier has a one-year warranty, but then you could purchase either two or four years extension to those warranties. And as you go through, as you, as you own the product for longer, the price differential becomes uh, more apparent as time goes by. So even if you looked at the FireBridge Unifier as being the same product as the Netvanta 1535P, there would be a lifetime cost advantage for the Netvanta. However, the Netvanta is a much more capable and flexible platform. So really, the, it becomes a no-brainer that the 1535P provides just more value than the FireBridge product does. And then lastly, I'd like to point out the difference in the company. So Adtran is a wide-range network vendor, and they have IP PBXs, and they have voice gateways, a pretty large line of switching products, uh, wireless offerings, and FireBridge has a much more narrow focus. They have extended Ethernet technologies, and as of today, it appears that they have two products, which is a 24 and a 40 port variety of the same type of technology. So as you're looking as, at making an investment or deciding to become a vendor for one of these different products, uh, the Adtran is a better choice because of their depth of product and uh, just the the structure of the company having more products to uh, to be more diversified. So now we'll move on to the Active Reach demo, which is really to show that the 1535 with Active Reach can traverse long lengths of cable that may not be in the best shape and still provide enough functionality to operate your endpoints. And in our example, uh, we are going over uh, cross connect wire with uh, something called Scotch Lock connectors going to a thousand foot box of category three back to the cross connect wire and scotch locks 
to a 66 block and then through about 120 feet of uh, house pairs and then we go to a voice grade jack to a voice grade cable to the active reach connector and then to a device so here we've got a typical server room with some cat 3 and cat 5 110 blocks and what we're going to show is the netvana 1535 connected to an Advanta 7100 to provide some voice there but the 1535 is connected to the cabling infrastructure using cross connect cables um, which is that stringy cable right there just two wires connected to a scotch lock connector which is you know sort of a shortcut way to connect the cables to the cat 3 and the cat 3 cable there we're using a single pair of wires and that's a thousand foot box of category 3 cable and what we're going to do is go up and take a look because it's cross connected to another uh, scotch lock connector to some more cross connect cable up to the voice grade block that we have here on location number two. And then from that location, we have it connected at the endpoint with some standard voice grade cabling over to the active reach connector. You see it on the left. And then on the right side, it's a standard uh, Cat5 patch cable. And on the um, media converter there we have the switch for power over Ethernet and that's how Active Reach knows whether to send PoE. And here we have the phone. It works well except for me not remembering the voicemail box number but as you can see the phone functions fine.